Hello and welcome back to an RPG Architect tutorial. Today I'm going to go over how to spawn entities. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the 3D sample project. And currently right now I just have an NPC. And when you talk to her, she says that you can take this horse for your journey. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have the horse spawn right here. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up some variables because we're going to have to start getting the player position or this entity's position, I should say. So I'm just going to simply have a map X. We'll just say map Y. And a map Z. So this is what I'm going to use. It's going to be used over and over again to get to cache basically coordinates positions. So we're going to add those there. So the next thing we're going to do is add the horse entity to spawn. And so you do that by going into the database. And then we have a new entity definitions here. So if you need to resize it, go ahead and do that. But we're going to add one and we're going to call it the horse. And we're going to add script here. This is just going to be page one, however you want to name this, because you can have as many pages as you want. And then we're going to add the horse here. We should have a horse right here. Awesome. Then I'm going to go ahead and just resize it like this. And Go like this. You can just kind of eye these. And we'll go like that. I'll have it be facing the east. East. Or no, west. I'll have it be facing the west. And then we're going to... We could have it moving. We could just have it moving like that. And yeah, so we can just leave this just like this for now. So we'll hit OK on this. And so that is our entity that we're going to spawn. So the next thing we need to do is spawn it. Now this could be done, for instance, you could have a, if you're trying for like a Zelda-like type of situation, you can go for the virtual keys where you could add it in the logic of the press script. So just to let you know that this is possible, you can do it in your, in your keys section here. But if you're doing it from an event, you can just simply go like this. But the, you're gonna use the uh, map command and then you're gonna go to spawn entity. All right, so it's going to want a few things. First off, you choose the entity that you want, and then you can also have it valued with a variable if you're if you're making like I don't know like a harvest moon type thing where you might have different plants or something like that. Maybe you set them up by a variables, which would be kind of cool. But you do need a position, and so we're going to set the position as the oh, this is for local, my bad, global. So the position is going to be the map X, and this one's going to be the map Y. And then this one is going to be the map Z. All right. And then there's this option for persist or not. And persist means that it's going to stay in the scene even when you transfer out. If you don't have this selected, as soon as you leave the map, it's going to disappear. But this one will keep it. Uh, keep it. So that, that's really nice. It's a lot like Galv's event spawner, if you ever use that. Uh, Yan Fly's event spawner wouldn't persist, but Galv's did. So this is kind of cool. You get the best of both worlds on this. And so the only thing that we're missing now is we're missing the accurate map X, map Y, map Z because we haven't saved any of those values. We haven't cached them. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to right click over spawn entity and we're going to start to save some data. So we're going to save a value and it's going to be a variable. We're going to go under party and then we're going to grab the map X. So this is where you have just, you know, some variables that you can save. These are basically properties that are being updated internally. And so we need to save them to a variable to use them. So we're going to go to map X here and we're going to save it to our map X a value right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste this two more times. And I'm, I'm always pasting it on spawn entity so it goes above it and paste. And so simply we're just going to change this to map Y, map Y, and Map Z, map Z. And the only thing that we need to change, I believe we need to change the X because we want it to spawn to the left. What we're going to do is right after the map X, we're going to right click on, over the, the map Y one so that it goes above it. it. And it really doesn't matter as long as it's done before the spawn entity. But we're going to manipulate some data and we're going to change variable. We're going to choose the map X. 
and we're going to say that we want to, I believe it's add, we want to add one. Can we do floats? Maybe I'll try one and a half because it is a, a wider sprite. So we'll do one and a half. And so what that's going to do is just going to offset the map or the map X by one and a half to the right. If I have this right, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out here. And so this should be the entire setup here. So if I click OK and we play test here, this NPC should spawn a horse right next to her. So yeah, it looks like I might want to come out a little bit more. So you, you would just play with this number until you got the correct, probably two will do it. Then we'll go like this. And boom, we spawn the horse. And then yeah, that horse will, I think I clicked persist. So if I did, this horse will stay in the scene and you will be able to interact with it. It's got collisions and everything. Hopefully that helps you understand how spawn entity works and also how to get position and stuff like this. Any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, it'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.